Hey, I'm Rob Menzies and welcome back to my channel. Today we are here doing yet another family vlog for you. This time we are going on a family trip away up to Edinburgh. We're going to bring you along for the ride and uh, basically show you around all of the lovely touristy bits that we're going to be doing and talk to you a bit about our journey on the way up. So then wonderful people, what we are now going to do is load up the boot. So um, the boot isn't quite as big as the Octavia used to be, but we're going to try and get all the stuff in it. So uh, you get to watch this at high speed. Megan, stay where you are. Will you watch this? Yeah. How's that for a bit of sunshine? I come up north and all the rain stops. What's that about? Can you see them? Look forward. Make them look. That would be one. That would be a hell of a walk, wouldn't it? Well, it's like Arvia Rock almost. Come on, go. That's quite a view, isn't it? Imagine what it's like still on top of that. I would imagine that we're pretty darn high. Hello down there. No more tickers. No, we're near Kendall Mint Cake, whatever it is. Oh yeah, go past Kendall. We went to Windermere, look. Like Windermere. What's a mint cake? You, you and your Kendall mint cake. You and your Kendall mint cake. Now that is a view. That is just a view. Wow. Just wow. Okay, I get Scotland. So far, we've hardly seen any houses. We've hardly seen any... Well, I don't think I have seen a town since we've got into Scotland. A car going past. Probably overtaking it in a minute. Um, I've not seen any kind of towns. There's hardly any houses. There's nothing but openness and tranquility. I'm starting to get Scotland. I get it. I've not got it before. I get it now. Okay, so we've just arrived in Edinburgh. We are just about to go and check into the hotel. We're going to bring you along for that. We have just been down the most epic roads with the most epic views. Um, so we're going to try and get a bit more of that. We missed out on the way down. We're going to hope we're going to get it on the way back. So we're going to perhaps try and do that. You're probably seeing from behind me um, here in the middle of Edinburgh. We've got some amazing views over there. Some epic buildings that look fantastic and uh, we're just going to come and check in the hotel here and down behind us is a train station as well so yeah looking really really nice um, we're going to basically crack on and uh, go and check in and then get out and about so hang on a second and we'll show you around the room as well so see you in a sec okay so we have made it into the room let's give you a quick guided tour around Yay. where are we we are in the leonardo royal hotel which is cool formerly known as Durian. So what can we see? Uh, as you can see, we have invaded the room already. We have a single bed for Megan. We have a double bed. We have a dancing wife behind me. Uh, we have whopping great TV. We have, hello, big mirror. We have a big wardrobe. We have an espresso machine. We have Megan. We have an espresso. What are in those cupboards? What are in those cupboards? Sorry, I'm just making for tea. There's nice. Where's mine? <laughs> How yeah, that's right. This has got drawers full of every single tea you can think of. Wow! Walkers, biscuits, it's yeah, they ain't gonna survive long. <laughs> that won't survive long. What's underneath? Biscuits. What's Espresso. underneath? Espresso. That's a fridge. Cool. Espresso. Uh, Megan. 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 What? Uh, come here, darling. What? Espresso. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Pods in there. Look. Pods. Pods. Wow. Dad, you looked out here because you can see the monument. 
You can see Edge of Princess Street, it's look. like many, many things. The Edge of Princess it's Street. Looks a bit like Amsterdam. There's the monument, there's the other one of there. Oh, question. And then, do you reckon this is? I don't really know what that is. It's the station. That's where we were supposed to park the car, even though we dumped it outside. Big bed. Right, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you the bathroom as well. What's that? It's a birdcage. It lists all the things you forgot. <laughs> Bring them up to you. That's cool. All the things you forgot, you can just have it brought up. So we have in here sink and bog. What a surprise! Nice. And a nice shower, which I will definitely be hopping in that one sometime soon. And mirror, so you can see yourself in the shower. And Megan waving non-stop. So yeah, we're going to enjoy the rest of our time here. I'm probably going to repark the car so it's actually in the right car park. And um, sorry I missed the roads on the way up. We're definitely going to do that on the way back. It was um, super cool. Wasn't that it? was super cool roads. Um, so we'll do that because it's amazing views. Um, so we're going to try and get a bit more of that on the way home. But I might muck around on the editing. So we shall see. So I'm off for a cup of tea and see you again soon. Well, hello and good morning to what is day one of our Scottish adventure. Look at this. We have absolutely gorgeous sunshine. Everyone is smiling and happy. We have got buses. We have got trams. We have got bagpipers going. He's doing a grand job over there. And look at these buildings. Look how wonderful this is. And also has that for a castle view. It is looking amazing. So we're going to go over and have a bit more of a watch of Mr. Bagpipe Player. And then we are heading over um, towards what looks to be a royal castle of some sort. And then we are going to be heading over on our hop off, hop hun bus tour. So come with us and enjoy the ride. You'll see a large structure there, that dark colour thing. This, again, here, they are always affectionate names for things in Edinburgh. That is affectionately called the Gothic Rocket. Or, if you're of a certain age, Thunderbirds 3. <laughs> now you're talking. <laughs> now you're talking. <laughs> So this is the statue of William Pitt the Younger. Here's always a pigeon standing on his head, but there's no one there just now. If you're looking straight ahead on the bus, you will see the Kingdom of Fife. We have a saying, if you can't see Fife, it's raining. If you can't see Fife, it's gonna rain. <laughs> Sorry, this this one here. Agatha Christie on her second marriage. Agatha Christie got married in there. She couldn't get married in England in church because she'd already been divorced, so she couldn't get married there. So Scotland being a lot more civilized, she decided to come up here and get married for the second time. She married a man a lot, lot younger than her. And in the, you know, in that day, it wasn't a sort of accepted thing. It's okay for a, a older man to marry a younger woman, but not the opposite. Her friends would query and ask her, why are you marrying a man so many years younger than you? And her answer was, well, he's an archaeologist. The older I get, the more interested in me he'll become. <laughs> I like that. That's good luck. This is what we watched on here on your left. We had a spate of, um, in the 1800s, of grave robbing, bunny snatching. That building there, people would be paid to stay in there all night to keep an eye on the grave to make sure nobody was robbing any graves or stealing anything. And that's where we get the term graveyard shift. That's where we get it from. 
Here they'll come up to the Fountain Bridge area of Edinburgh. In 1930, a guy was born here, and his nickname was Big Tam. Big Tam. They had loads of jobs. He, he, uh, when he left school, he was a milkman to begin with, and then he was a coffin filler, sure. He was a bouncer in Club Dovies, because he's quite a fit guy, big guy and all that. He joined the Navy. Unfortunately, he got a medical discharge from the Navy, from stomach ulcers. So he decided when he came out, he'd moved into London, he dropped the name Big Tam, and he decided to seek him acting. So he took up some acting, he got a bit of success in the theatre. He got even more success in film industry, a lot of good movies, and eventually in 1962, he got his part, he got his big break. He became the first and the best. James Bond. James Bond. Sean Connery. Sir Sean Bond. Just along the road, there, on the traffic lights here, 200 yards along the road there, born in 1930. Favourite son of Edinburgh. Spoke to Sean once and he was a pure gentleman, a lovely guy. He was born, he was knighted, sorry, he was given the freedom of the city in 1991. He was knighted by Her Majesty at Holyrood Palace in 2000. And unfortunately, in October 2020, Sean passed away, but he was nine year old, he, you know, he had a very, very good life. Very well thought of man, loved the name, but I really love Sean Connery. Twenty thousand people come to watch the hangings here. They would bring the people down from the um, cotton jail wherever they were held on the back of a wagon or a cart, and they bring them down here, hands tied behind their back, standing ready to take their turn on the gallows. Sometimes the publicans across the all these pubs here will come and offer them a drink, the last drink on earth. You know, you're going to meet your maker. Here's a drink and all the rest of it. The wagon master is stopped and saying, "No, they're not allowed to drink. They're not allowed. They're on the wagon, and that's where the term on the wagon comes from." Depending on how he was getting hung, how the method they used, because remember, when you were sentenced to death, you were to hang by the neck till you were dead. So they, some of them were very primitive, they would just put a loop across a beam of wood, put the loop in their neck, and pull them up and choke them to death. Then it could take them half an hour to die, unless they had money. They would pay kids, especially, to grab a hold of their legs, add to their weight. No weight, they choke quicker, they die quicker. These children, these kids, were known as hangers on. And at the end of the day, the hangman would go to one of these pubs here. He would take the noose with him that he had to hang these people. He would take it with him and then cut it up into pieces and sell it. It's money for old rope. <laughs> Also Sean Connery, what was a student, he went there to pose, to make some money for his acting lessons. He went there to pose in a minute, no closer. And I've been told on the day he posed, it was a very cold winter's day. <laughs> Why did the women laugh at that one? I, I, I didn't get that at all. Anyway, he posed there. And when he became famous and had money, he went back there. He wanted to buy these drawings back. Understandably, he wanted to buy them back. That college and their wisdom said, no, 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 we're going to hold on these a little bit longer, Sean. And they did, they've still got them. You, the public can't go and see them, they're not on display or anything like that. If you're an art student, you can go in there, you can't see them. But, it's for your eyes only. You knew that was coming, eh? You knew that was coming. You've been there too before. <laughs> yeah, you knew that was coming. It's a bit obvious, eh? The big so we have made it through and into the Scottish Museum in Edinburgh and um, basically we're having a great time here. This is a fantastic interactive museum. Um, it's really, really cool and as you can probably tell by everything behind me, it is also on split levels. Uh, I think we're probably going to go and sit down um, on one of those chairs behind me and go and have something to eat. 
Um, but yeah, we are having quite a lot of fun here. There's lots and lots here to do. Very, very interactive and lots for you here to see. So um, we might just bring you along and you may just get to see a very special robotic arm spell out Megan's name. <laughs> Let's see what else we can find. So this is Megan and she's spelling out her name and it says Megan on there. I wonder what this robot over here might do. Uh, yeah. It has a quite clever because it uses the input and it actually gets all the letters. Yeah. Okay, so we've been heading around on our amazing little hop on, hop off bus tour, which has brought us to the end of the tour and what can only be described as the top of the world. You know, when you're in Scotland, you do kind of feel very north, which makes you feel very up high, but this actually is very up high. So behind us over there, that is actually part of an active, no, not active, it was an active volcano millions of years ago, which created those big rocks. You can maybe see over there in the distance, and then you have huge great spire that is over there, and then you have monumentic rocks, and you have a wife and a daughter, but then over this way, and I don't know if you can see it, is not only have you got most of Edinburgh, but as well as that, you've also got some pretty amazing, huge, great boats that are out in the port as well. I don't know if you can see that over there, which looks pretty epic. So yeah, we've got some amazing views. Somehow we came to Edinburgh and in what was a very, very rainy month of March, we're now very beginning of April and somehow we've managed to book the most glorious sun shining blue sky day in Scotland. So who can possibly complain at that? So I hope you enjoy these views, because we certainly are. <laughs> Ever wondered what it might look like if you're on top of the world looking over it all and admiring your domain? Because I think that's what I'm doing about now. Look at that, just as far as the eyes can see. So as we look up over here, you may see down here is where we were a little bit earlier on. You see that? That was basically where we saw Discovery World. And behind it here is part of the volcanic bit. So that bit coming up, that's also a walk. So there's people right up the very top of that. And then you can look out and you get to see the views of Edinburgh. And that's actually over there, the train station and also where we stayed in a hotel last night and where we'll be staying tonight. But then it's the rest of the city. And you can see the clock that's over there. As you may have picked up from the tour guide, if you watch that section, that clock's always three minutes 
too late so it gets people to run for the train and gets the train on time unless it is New Year's in which case it is on time for the strike at midnight but that's Edinburgh okay so we are now down at some of the main gardens and as you can see we've got the Sun behind us we've got some cracking views in front of us so over here can you see over here my lovely sunglasses that I'm on my new pointing stick we have what I believe is called the old town and down here we have some lovely gardens where you can see lots of people sitting and snacking and over here you can see what is an amazing now apparently this is the second largest steeple um, for a writer in the UK and it's because he made Scotland um, famous and basically turned Scotland into a tourist location and then obviously you have lots of buildings that are around as well but it's really nice yet again we've been lucky today clear blue skies all day it's been so 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 nice so yeah just thought you might enjoy that one we are just about to go and jump on um, another jump on hop on hop off bus and go and zoom around and go and have a look at the castle so maybe you'll see us again in a minute so hello and welcome back to day two of our Edinburgh adventure and as you may guess we are now in the zoo and we have walked all the way up to the top of the zoo we're starting at the top and working our way back down and behind me what you may see up here is one very big lion just pacing himself about so um, yeah let's see if we can get a bit closer so you can have a look I just found two more down here you found more see. found two more lions okay we're gonna go and see the lions let's come and have a look come on We said our cat was a murder kitty. Now you know who really is. but I don't think I'll be tickling their tummies anytime soon, do you? So it looks like someone's going out for a nice little stroll. Got a funny feeling that he is a little bit peckish. He's strolling around, I think he's waiting for something to eat. That's to see him up and around. Normally they're sunning themselves in the sun. He seems to be having a bit of a pace. He's having a bit of a walk. He's peckish. Does like anyone want to just jump over these rails and come over here for a minute? I'll just get rid of something. do with a nice little chomp of a bit of a bristle. 
A zebi the zebra can be seen foraging in the undergrowths of the African wilderness. We spy these three here in the semi-African Edinburgh Zoo. people we have come back to the penguin enclosure where we have feeding time for the lovely penguins and they are all standing there as they try and dig their way out of this enclosure hence the one over there is flapping his wings looking at the crowd going smile and wave boys smile and wave look he's waving he's waving he's waving <laughs> right someone else's turn my wings are getting my wings are getting steady come on someone stand in front of the yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, no, I'm a kit. I can't, I can't be bothered. Can't see me. I shall eat a zargnut. You shall not see me. I'm standing so still that I'm completely invisible. I thought it was a statue, not an emperor penguin. Okay, I'm going to tell you this now. We were walking in and. Mum was going, oh look at the emperor of penguins going over there and dad went, those are statues and after I said look, that beak's moving and he went, damn it, wait they're real. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way that they're walking up to the actual enclosure over there where there's a wooden hut and it's like people are looking at us, we shall walk over, waddle over, I shall flap my wings and wave. Hello people. So for those of you that have seen the film Zootopolis, I'm sensing the need to go flash. Now flash. What is it that you call a three-humped camel? Pregnant. <laughs> As you may tell, this is a sloth. We will call him Flash. That's not his real name, but we'll call him Flash. He seems to be very sleepy and kind of hanging upside down. So here we have what me and Megan have decided is a baby screaming goat. Now if any of you have watched Love and Thunder, which is Thor, you will know that there's a couple of goats, which are flying goats, they're very magical beings, that have a tendency of going Aah! a lot. And we think it might be this guy. That's not what they do, they scream. How do they scream them, Mum? I love a bitch. Frightful. <laughs> well, we reckon it's this guy anyway. I think I'm screaming goat, but I ain't doing that. To <laughs> <laughs> We're officially going to call Mum a screaming goat. Oh, well, he was getting his ears ready. He'll just scratch his ear with his back hoof. Mm. So foraging up in the undergrowth is red panda. He seems to be climbing from tree branch to tree branch. Don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I'll try and zoom in. Peasants. He is looking down. <laughs> Hope you don't fall. We're not the best catch. 
go, panda go.
Okay, so this is now our third day. We are now heading home. We managed to get the days absolutely right as this one is gonna be a wet, horrible day. Um, we've been so lucky last couple of days around Edinburgh with some gorgeous sunshine and clear blue skies, which have been lovely. Um, but this does bring us to the end of our video as we're now gonna be doing nothing more than driving home. Um, so I hope you did enjoy this vlog. Um, I hope you enjoyed all of the tours and looking around everything that we managed to do. And if this was enjoyable for you, please do drop me a like and a subscribe as I'm sure I'll be doing more of this kind of stuff for you again in the near future. So I hope you enjoyed and see you again soon. Bye! I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please remember to not only like the video, but also hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos like this in the future. Thanks again for watching and see you again soon.